look at insertion sort. For explaining insertion sort, I have taken an array of elements. So five elements are there. To reduce board work, I have just uh, avoided indices and even they are not required. Let us perform insertion sort. The very first thing is, I have five elements here. So we assume that this first element is already sorted. If there is only one element, then obviously it is sorted. So we assume that just the first element is sorted. Then the remaining elements are not sorted. So remaining elements will take out from an array and insert them on this side in a sorted list. So take out an element, insert this side. Take out an element, insert this side. So right now in an array, one element is sorted, four elements are not sorted. One element, that is eight, is sorted. So from the unsorted list, we'll take out an element and insert this side. Take out an element and insert this side. This is what the procedure is. So let us start the process. First step, I will insert five. Insert five. So for inserting five, see first element eight is as it is. I am inserting five. So the remaining elements as it is. Now the list will be extending to two elements. Now for inserting five, check with this element. 8 is greater than 5, so shift it. Now check, there is nothing, there is nothing to check. So we have reached at the first place, so insert 5 at this place. So after inserting 5, the result is 5, then 8, till here the list is sorted, remaining 7, 3, 2, they are not yet sorted. So I have shown here how to insert 5, how to shift the element, and this is the result. So one element we have inserted, so this, let us call it as first pass first pass then second pass in second pass let us insert seven in the list already five and eight are sorted now we are trying to insert seven so list will extend till here and the remaining elements are this these are not yet sorted so seven we are going to insert so seven take it outside now for inserting seven start shifting the elements which are larger than seven from right hand side 8, it is greater. 5, no, it's not greater. So 7 should be inserted here. So the result after inserting 7 is 5, 7, 8 and 3, 2 till 3 elements list is sorted. We will also analyze this one. See, how many elements were compared? Just one comparison. How many swaps? Means how much shifting? Only one element was shifted. So let us say one swap. Then in this second pass, how many elements were compared? In our example, only one element was compared. But at most, how many? Both 8 and 5 can move, possible. If the number is smaller than 5, then both can move. So let us write down maximum comparisons and maximum swaps. So maximum comparisons are 2 comparisons and maximum swaps are 2 swaps. Now we have to insert two more elements and sort two more elements. So let me continue with the rest of the elements. The resultant array I will take it here. Now third pass. Insert three. So insert three. So for inserting three, take out three. And the list size will be till here. This is a free space. Now start shifting the element. 8 is greater, shifted. 7 is greater, shifted. 3 is greater, shifted. Then 3 comes here. So after shifting and inserting 3, the list looks like this. Till here the list is sorted. 3, 5, 7, 8. Then this is 2. Then here, how many comparisons and how many swaps are done? 3. Three comparisons and three swaps, right? These are maximum. Now, one last element is remaining two. So, this is the fourth pass we will perform. Insert two. We will insert two. So, in this array, when we insert two, from this side we will take out two. And the list size will be maximum now till the last element. Presently, sorted elements are these. That is three, five, seven, eight. This is a free space. Now start comparing and shifting the elements. 8 is greater than 2. It will shift 7 also and 5 also and 3 also. Then 2 will come at this place. After shifting and copying the elements, 
final array looks like this 2, 3, 5, 7, 8. So that's it. This is sorted. We got a sorted array. So every time from right hand side we are taking out an element and inserting it on the left hand side. Left hand side list is always sorted. Now lastly, what are the number of comparisons? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 comparisons we have done and maximum 4 swaps. Now let us do some analysis. So first of all, how many passes are required? Number of passes. Number of passes. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 passes for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements. 5 elements, 4 passes. Means 10 elements, 9 passes. So for n elements, how many passes? n minus 1 passes. n minus 1 passes required. Then how many comparisons, number of comparisons? So find out number of comparisons. Let us check here. In the first pass, one comparison was done. And second pass, two comparisons were done. Third pass, three. And the fourth pass, four. So I'll add them. One comparison, two plus three plus four. As there are five elements, four passes. So up to four. N elements, N minus one passes. So up to n minus 1. So this is n into n minus 1 by 2. So this polynomial is of degree square, order of n square. As the number of comparisons are taken as the time complexity of algorithm, so time complexity of insertion sort is n square. Maximum time taken by insertion sort is n square. Now what about the swaps? Here one swap, maximum two swaps, right? Then 3, 4 swap and 4 swap. So for swaps also same as number of comparisons. So number of swaps for n elements it will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus goes on to n minus 1. And this is n into n minus 1 by 2. So this is n square swaps. So maximum swaps are order of n square. So up, this is about comparisons and swaps. We have to check whether it is adaptive and stable or not. But before that, I will tell you few important things about insertion sort. First thing, if I perform just one pass, what is the result? See, after the one, after the first pass, I got 5 and 8. Is it useful anyway? Can I say that the first element will be smallest element? No, we cannot say that. That is not the smallest element. If suppose I have one more element, a 9 here, can I say 8 is the largest element? No. So intermediate results, that is just one pass or two pass, will not give you any useful result in insertion sort. Like in bubble sort, if you perform one pass, we get the largest element, two passes, two largest element. But insertion sort, you will not get anything useful. Then second important thing about insertion sort. We have seen insertion in an array as well as insertion in a linked list. So in an array, we have to shift the elements, but in a linked list, we don't have to shift anything. So the benefit of insertion sort upon linked list is that you don't have to shift the elements. Without shifting, you can insert. So insertion sort is more useful or more compatible with a linked list than array. Or I should say that insertion sort is designed for linked list. Yes, it is designed for linked list. So remember this point. For sorting linked list, insertion sort is better. Now next I will write on the algorithm for insertion sort. Then later we will analyze rest of the thing. So here is a function for insertion sort which is taking an array and number of elements. In our example, the size of an array is 5, so n is 5 here. So let us assume that this is 5. But the indices are from 0 to 4 only. Now first is for loop for passes. How many passes for n elements? n minus 1 passes. But if you see the passes, in first pass, which element we are trying to insert? That is second element at index 1. So we are trying to insert this one, right? So this is index 1. So we don't have to start from 0. We have to start from 1. So insert the element from index 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. 
So this loop should start from one onward. So i takes values from one and i is less than till four it should go. So less than five, less than n. So till four it will go then i plus plus. So from one to four, because at zeroth index we have the first element and that we are assuming it's already inserted. So we are starting from this one. So this is for repeating passes. Then in each pass what we are supposed to do. Then I will take one example here. From that we will learn what we should do in every pass. Then we will write on the code. Now I have an example, an array of size 7. In this already till here the elements are sorted. That is 0 to 5. Now I am inserting 10. So take out 10 in some variable. Let us say x. So right now I am inserting this element. So this i is present here. i is pointing here. So this is the element that I am inserting. So that element I have taken in x. Now I have to shift the elements and make this a 10 insert in a sorted position. So right now this i is on 6. Now what is the procedure? So I should start shifting from where? This element onward. So I will take j here. j is i minus 1. Yes. The first thing I need is j. j is i minus 1. Yes. I need this j. And also I should take this last element wherever i is pointing that in x. So yes, I will do this also. x assign a of i. That is the element that was present here, right? So I am taking in x. So I am assuming that it's not there. Then what is the procedure? I have to shift all greater elements. So I should compare a of j with the element x. This is greater. So shift it and j minus minus. This is greater than this. Shift it. J minus minus. This is greater than this one. 10. So shift it. J minus minus. This is greater than this one. So shift it. J minus minus. Now this is small. Stop. So the procedure is very simple. Go on shifting the elements as long as A of J is greater than X. So yes. While... A of J is greater than X. Go on shifting the element. So wherever J is pointing, move the element to the next location. A of J plus 1 should be copied with A of J as well as J should be decremented. This is what I have to do for shifting the elements. And right now, this 20 is moved, 18 is also moved and 14 is also moved, 12 is also moved. This place is free, right? This place is free. So this element, we got it smaller. So this element 10 should be inserted at which place? J plus 1. So once you come out of this loop, the element should be inserted at J plus 1. J plus 1 assign X. That's all. I have stopped this loop also. Now one more thing. This place, I left it empty. So let us observe. Suppose this is not a 10. If this is 2. Then what happens? From this point, if I continue, 8 is greater than 2. Shift it. J minus minus. 6 is greater than 2. Shift it. J minus minus. So J became what? Minus 1 now. So stop. So when J becomes minus 1, stop. Means continue as long as J is greater than minus 1. So one more condition I should write down. J greater than minus 1. And this condition. So this is the algorithm for insertion sort. We found that the time complexity of insertion sort is n square. And here from the code, if you see for loop, then inside that while loop. So two nested loops are there. So this is n square. So from the code also, we can say it is n square. So next thing that is remaining is we have to check whether it is adaptive or stable or not.